Well, everyone, it's time to put the chub gear away. There's a few weeks left of the river season, and I've got to get my match fishing head back on. The one thing that I'm dreading, though, I've got an empty tray of winders that just needs filling. Fortunately, I've got some nice new floats to fill it with. But there's a few tips and tricks that I'm just going to show you to help make your rig making a little bit easier. And a few little products that you might not have seen uh, from new fish that I hadn't seen before. So I'm just going to show you them now really quick. Talk you through the new floats, what I'm going to be setting up. And uh, a couple of little tips that might just help you rig making and make it a little bit easier. Now I don't know about you boys and girls, but I absolutely detest making rigs. Some people that enjoy it, they must be absolute psychopaths because I just think it's the most mind-numbing job in the world. But it's a means to an end, it has to be done. We've got to get on with it, we've got to get those rigs tied because in match fishing, preparation is everything. Now, I'm not one of those who goes mad. I have never have been. I don't have trays and trays of rigs or anything like that. What I do, I pick up a select range of floats, tie up what I think I need and kind of keep on top of it. That just I just find that makes it easier. The last thing I want is trays and trays of rigs that aren't getting used. The line ends up kinked, maybe deteriorates over time, and it's just it's wasting my time. I haven't got lots of spare time to be tying rigs that just sit in wine in uh, sit on winders like not getting used. So I like to have like a couple of trays in my seat box drawer. That's where I keep my rigs rather than in a stacker. Um, I, I have got a stacker at home, uh, and I've got some spare trays. But to be honest, I, I kind of most of my rigs that I'm using are, are in my drawer, and I sort of top them up as I go if that makes sense. Anyway, I've got some nice new floats to show you. And that's going to make the whole process of rig tying that a little bit nicer because it is lovely to be threading on some new floats. So I'm just going to run you through some of the floats, uh, just briefly. I don't really want to be that. It's more the other bits and pieces that I didn't even know new fish did that before I joined them. And I'm just going to show you them because it might, if like me, you've got poor eyes, especially one of these products will really help you because... My eyes are shocking and threading bits of silicon on. It's not easy for me. So let's show you them a few little bits and uh, we'll get some rigs made ready for my spring match fishing season. Right, so let's get on with what rigs we're going to be tying up because I will be doing uh, just general commercial fishing really in the in the spring. Um, probably shares me I've just got to go local to start with get myself back into it because it's been such a long time since I've been match fishing that I'm just going to put it local, Shearsby Valley, maybe a bit of makings, stuff like that, just something that I can go keep things simple and get match fit again before probably venturing a bit further afield. So there's a couple of floats that I think could be really handy for them two venues. The first float that I'm going to be rigging up is the Cipri. It's just that classic slim shape that is just absolutely perfect for all round commercial fishing really. Loads of different baits work well with this pattern. You can use maggots, you can use soft pellets, you can use hard pellets. It's just a really good all round pattern. So I'm going to make sure I've got quite a few of these tied up. They've got a nice tie wire stem, so nice and strong and durable, but most importantly, stable. The thing that I really like about it though is the 1.75mm bristle. Uh, it's a bristle type that I really like. It just works so nice. It's just such a nice diameter, especially when you're using maybe like hard pellets meat that kind of stuff it's just probably a little bit better than than the, the 1.5 that i used to use what i used to do is to have to thicken up my 1.5s with paint don't have to do it anymore they're absolutely bang on so i'm going to tie up some of them the second float i'm going to be tying up for this little short rig making session that i've got is the bulk some of the lakes at makings even shearsby valley when there's a wind on you do need something with a bit of a round body because you're faced with eight nine foot of water seven foot of water and something like the bulk is ideal for that. It's got that, that classic sort of body down, round, rounded sort of shape. Lovely, lovely stable pattern. Nice long tip, 1.5 mil. Just a float that I can do a lot with. I'll probably shot them up with a bulk and two droppers. Nice and simple. The cipries will probably be used with more strung bulks. So I can use like hard pellets, fish on the drop, maggots on the drop, that kind of stuff. Whereas this is all about getting it on the bottom. A beautiful pattern. One that's going to be absolutely perfect. Now when it comes to rigging up, these beauties, you're looking at night high wire stems. The other floats in the range have got glass, but we'll do them another day. We'll talk about them another day. Um, and I found that a 0.3 silicon is absolutely ideal for that. Spot on 0.3 silicon. Now, I'm going to be tying these up on like 016 to give me, I can use them with obviously hook lengths up to 016. Um, 
And getting that 016 through silicon like that is a bit tricky, especially if you've got eyes as bad as me. That being said, I didn't even know this existed, but we've got all this beautiful silicon in various, you get you can buy packets like that, a single size, which has got one meter length, so you can absolutely load, um, not like a little packet where you've got a pissy amount, you've got a proper amount of the right diameter, because loads of anglers just use fiberglass, or just use nitide, or just use carbon, so we've got 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 1mm, 1.2, so even if you've got, um, like big boy floats, you can get the, the, the appropriate silicon. But in one meter lens, proper lens, so you've got plenty. So when you go in and you, say you are a guy who just uses carbon, get the appropriate silicon that fits it and you get a proper length that a really good quality silicon. I don't want to name anybody, but some very, very, very good Yorkshire matchmen go to the New Fish headquarters and get this off us. I'm saying no more about that. But I wanted to show you if you do struggle with your eyes, or you, maybe your hands, maybe you're not as good as they once were, maybe you've worked a lifetime in like construction or whatever and your hands are a bit bad, this stuff is an absolute winner. Pre-threaded silicon. It's one of those products that, it's not for everyone, a lot of you probably will want to buy the full lengths of silicon, but if you don't, this beauty can make your life so easy, especially when you're using the 0.3, the 0.5 silicons, because that just makes threading it on the line so much easier. So one thing I like about that is when you put in, say, you want to use a Cipri float, which is a float that we would all like to use for hard pellets in the summer, you might want to use an O20 mainline and getting O20 through that 0.3 silicon, bit of a bitch to be honest. Whereas obviously with that, because the line goes through the wire and you pull it on, makes it easier. So I'm not saying it's the be all and end all, but some guys struggle to get their silicon on the line and that pre-threaded float silicon makes things dead easy. Okay, so I've got my Cipri on 018 AccuPower. Like I say, getting that 018 through the finer silicons can be difficult. So this might be the answer for you. So all you've got is a little wire loop there. Pass your line through that like you would like a rubber stop. And all you've got to do is slide those on and there you go, you've got your three bits of silicon on the, on the line. As simple as that. It's quick, it's effective, it's easy, and I like easy. I like doing things the easy way. So there we go, we've got our float with the three bits of silicon on, ready for me to tie a loop on, get the shot on the line, get it on the winder. As quick and as easy as that, and that just makes the job very, very easy. It's, it's a great little bit of kit, that pre-friendly silicon. You might look at it and think it's a bit of a gimmick. It's not, like I say, not everyone is blessed with good eyes or good dexterity in the fingers. So that can be a bit of a really helpful little uh, product that is. But like I say, if you don't want the pre-threaded stuff, we have got every silicon option you can imagine. We've got little boxes with like a multi-pack if you want a multi-pack with all the different sizes in it. So if you don't, if you're a guy who has loads of different rigs and you don't want to buy meters and meters of silicon, then the little mixed tub, the assorted tub is, is absolutely spot on. But like I say, for, I don't want to say serious anglers, but you know, anglers who know exactly what they're going to be using, what floats they're going to be using, they probably use the same ones over and over again, then the one meter packs are probably better for you. And like I said, this silicon is of the highest quality. If you haven't seen it and you do struggle with this, try that pre-threaded silicon because it is a bit of a bit of a game changer if, if you do struggle. So there you go, I'm going to get on with filling this rig tray up few little handy tips there in regards to getting sorted with your rig tying and uh, we'll see you again on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope even if you just take one little thing away from that when it comes to what silicon to buy, what size to buy or even just giving that pre-threaded a try might just help you out and make the process of rig tying that little bit easier. See you again soon everyone.